we're here in Glasgow tonight for a very special centenary. The BBC began broadcasting in Scotland 100 years ago this week. We are here in Glasgow tonight to mark a very special centenary. It is 100 years ago this week that the BBC first began broadcasting in Scotland. The first BBC radio broadcast was transmitted from an attic room just a couple of miles away from here in the city centre. And since then, the BBC in Scotland has undergone remarkable change with a network of radio stations across the country and three dedicated TV channels in both English and in Gaelic. Our special correspondent Alan Little reports on how the BBC has been a part of Scottish life over the past century. In March 1923, the BBC's founder, John Reith, got off the London train and made his way through these streets. His five Scottish employees were about to take to the airwaves for the first time. And this is where it happened, in an attic room, two floors above me, in this Glasgow townhouse, a new chapter in broadcasting. There's a man, a man of a and clan that has fallen his at the start, the audience was local, and so was the content. Bagpipes, Scottish speech and song, Glasgow talking to Glasgow. But soon, London would exert control over what it called its provincial stations, even determining what kind of voices were acceptable on Scotland's airwaves. This is BBC Television from Scotland. Thirty years later, television came to Scotland. Most programmes were made in London and beamed into Scotland through a new transmitter here at Kirkushots near Glasgow. By mid-century, this technology had brought the BBC into nearly every home in the land and that would make it a very powerful unifying force because it created a single shared cultural space from Caithness to Cornwall. Soon we'd all be hearing the same news, laughing at the same jokes, enjoying the same music and recognising the same celebrities. And in that shared space, this is how the distinctiveness of Scotland was represented. This Scotland skipped and reeled its way, tartan clad, onto Britain's TV screens for decades. <laughs> But in the cultural upheavals of the 1960s, Scots began to seek a more authentic representation of who they were. I think that um, Scottish produced television programmes are introspecti introspective, parochial, nationalistic and um, narrow-minded. It's not real. It's blatantly not Scottish to, I mean, to people in Scotland anyway. What would folks say of the Queen of the Saw there, near naked? We'll be the speaking laughing stock of the place. The dramatisation in 1971 of the classic Scots novel Sunset Song, with its themes of sexual awakening, domestic violence and war trauma, was a turning point. Well, it wouldn't be the first time you've seen a naked lass yourself. The BBC in Scotland began to shed its tartan wrapper. When the Scottish Parliament was established, the power to legislate on broadcasting stayed at Westminster. Control stayed in London. During the 2014 independence referendum, some accused the BBC of a sustained anti-independence bias. For a century after the Scot John Reith created it, the BBC remains a cultural force from Caithness to Cornwall and an enduring part of the shared British experience. Alan Little, BBC News, Glasgow.